is going on, guys? It's your boy Scissor here. I'm, I, I've enjoyed my day to like the fullest extent. So I hope, I really hope my like great day rubs off on you guys for your day today, uh, and including my video today. So we're actually doing something really freaking cool today. We're gonna be showing you guys how to use or excuse me, how to create your CS:GO skins. Or if you have no clue what CS:GO is or skins, what they are at all. Uh, what they are is CS:GO is actually actually a video game, Counter Strike, a little fence, and actually be it's becoming even more popular than it is right now and skins are something like uh, basically camos for the gun so with that being said we're gonna be creating camos for a game which you can actually later on implement and uh, uh, upload to CSGO Workshop which is actually a place where uh, random CMS uh, C Steam users can actually go and vote for some CSGO skins that they maybe like and then just maybe that your your skin is very good and people have really voted for it and really enjoy it they can actually patch it into the next game with new cases or something like that later on in the future it's cool so if you guys are into game design or something like that I ple I think this counts it, does this count you're actually creating a skin for the game so with that being said here's my example uh, the op Doppler if you guys have no clue what this is I just literally just took uh, or I try to imitate the text Texture on the new CSGO knives called Doppler, the new series of uh, knives and such, and I try to implement the same exact color and texture that they have there, so I put on the op skin, that's just my example for you guys today, so we do something cool like this, where you can actually have, of course I'm using a texture for today's example again, as well as I did it with this Doppler, um, you don't have to use textures, you can use shapes, stripes going, you know, wherever, and you can use some really nice great textures with like maybe even metal textures and just fixing with CCs and all that cool stuff. So I just want to show you guys how, how to basically go about designing it. Not, I'm not going to be designing one like crazy. I'm just going to use another texture for an example. With that being said, the only thing you have to do and use and actually download is in my description right now. It's called, I don't know what I called it, CSGO mappings or something like that. So what these actually are are basically all these CSGO guns and all the TJ files, the all the PSDs that you need to open, and as well as including the VTF edit uh, program, which you're going to be using to actually uh, later on upload to CS:GO, uh, Steam Workshop, all that cool stuff. So, with that being said, all you got to do is download this folder, and you're ready to go. As well as I'm ready to go right now. So, of course, before we you know continue, 200 likes on this video, can shoot down below. If you don't know that yet, you are really late. I've been doing it for a year and a half. So, it's basically a secret download for you guys at the end of the video who actually actually like the video, of course. And if you get 200 likes, get a cool little freaking download giveaway thing. So, with that being said, I kind of want to hit like 300 likes. I don't know, maybe let's just go for it. Why not? And as, as well as thank you guys for 36k subscribers. We are really close to 40k. I can't freaking wait. So, all right, let's get going. So, I'm going to be doing another op skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my folder that I, I told you guys to download, and I'm going to go to rifles or snipers. I'm going to go to op, and like I said, there's going to be three files here. One's going to be an objective file, which is actually the file that's used to actually view the 3D uh, model. One's going to be the op uh, PSD, which is going to be open right now. And then the other is going to be the TGA file, which is going to be basically the UV mapping, where you can actually start editing um, in Photoshop the, the mapping and actually get a live update of how it's updating. It, it's freaking cool. I'm going to show you guys it like, like in a second. Like I said, it has to be in Photoshop CC because it has a 3D element thing in it. I'm going to show you guys all about this right now. So when you open this up, any gun you have, it may not have the texture on already. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that as well as I'm going to show you guys how to actually you know, zoom and actually move the camera because sometimes people don't know. If you're on your move tool, which is actually V on your keyboard, uh, the top tool right here, and if I went over here to our 3D property here, if I clicked on current view, if I use alt and scroll really quickly to zoom in, once you're on your current view selected and you're on a move tool, you can actually freely move your camera around in the canvas. You can see all corners, uh, all sides of the op or whatever skin you're doing. Um, with that being said, with also clicking on environment here, the top tab in your 3D file right here, if you go up three tabs to properties, this is where you can actually see some edits or this is how you would edit you know, things that are in here. So if I went to properties really quickly, you can see color. The environment color is basically how you see the ops uh, the textures in it. So if I put this color up to my the highest intensity, you can just see the texture way way more. So that's that's this is basically used if you want to see both sides of the app. Because if you have it lower, the infinity light that's already in the the Lightroom, I guess you can say in Photoshop, is very very uh, just put on one side of the op. So if I went and lowered it, you can see that this side comes re really really dark. So if you want to see both sides. Put it up there but what happens is the the color when you actually start editing it through your own textures and such will be very flat so if you want to keep it 3d looking of course you can view it like this to see both sides but then if you want to go back to only seeing one side which is perfectly fine if it's both on the same sides which it probably should be some kind of symmetrical going um uh it would just look better and more 3d and not so flat i don't know if i can really ex like show the example but i'm just going to show you guys that that's how you would be able to view both sides with you know even lighting um 
After that, once all you got to do is actually, if you guys want to actually have the texture on already automatically, if it doesn't do it for you for some reason, you can go to your materials, uh, which is right here, your third tab right here, your material tab, and then go back to properties. And then you see diffuse. This little color thing here and then the thing uh, the page little page thing here it's actually your UV map you can see that there if you don't have this on already go to replace texture and then you would go back to the your file that I told you to go to so the I'm on the op and this is where you click on the TGA file or the T R T A R G A whatever file um, we press open and then actually opens up the UV mapping map that you just need so once you've done that I already have it open there you go you're ready to go so if I went back to current view Rotate it really quickly, zoom out. Um, to actually open up the UV mapping sheet, which you need to edit on, you just double click on where it says op. I'm just gonna double click on that. And you can see here, it opens up the textures itself, so you're actually ready to actually start editing. Um, anything you do, you just make a new layer over this. This is your background layer. You don't want to delete this. You don't want to get rid of it because this is the layer that you're going to see where everything is. So you're going to keep this up the entire time. And then when you're done, of course, you can either like, you know, uh, if we unlock it really quickly, press okay <clears throat> if I just unlocked it of course when you're done when I, how I unlock it by the way I just double click on and press okay you can hide the layer and you're good to go but uh, prior to that everything on here is you have to basically select it hand pick it out uh, either cut it out with your pen tool which is the most you know recommended I would not recommend you guys, you guys to do what I'm gonna be doing right now which is gonna be using the magnifying glass or not the magnifying what the, the magnetic tool to actually cut this out because I want to you know conserve time and such but for any instance, if you want to make something one solid color, you surely as hell can. Like I said, when you make a new layer over this thing, you can see uh, the op actually updates in real time over here on this tab. So you can see now everything's blue. So you can see how this is kind of like working right now. So you can see how the whole thing is actually, you know, placed on. That's why I told you guys you want to really um, select each part one by one. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to make another new layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, like I said, the magnetic tool. I'm not going to pen tool this out. For you guys, this is like I said, it's tutorial purposes. For you guys, please pen tool it out. You have no clue to use the pen tool. Look at any video that I ever I've ever done. I've done like twenty little, literally, probably like a hundred pen tool, like little pen tool tutorials. It's very easy to use this pen tool. Trust me. But right now I'm using the magnifying tool, and I'm just gonna magnify this thing out, <clears throat> like so. Um. Boom, let's just keep it there for now. So once you've done this, either you pen tool it out, I really hope you guys did, <clears throat> or you did what I did for some reason. All you have to do is right click, fill this with a color that you can actually see. I'm just gonna use a uh, nice little gray. Press okay, right click, deselect, or control D, and then you're good to go. Like I said, if I go back here, it actually updates automatically, so everything will be you know green, as well as what I already have on this little this UV mapping sheet. But that one part I selected out will be gray. So this is where I can say you can either do a, a cool little stripe, um, anything you do, by the way, this is just going to be, let's just say, one side of the op or whatever. You go, Make sure you name all your layers. I don't know why I have an explanation point. Make sure you name all of your layers so you understand where you're at. Where you're, where you're, what the hell? Where you are at. I don't know why I just skipped over words. Um, if I make a new layer over this one side, which I have here already, anything you do, you want to have it clipping mask, clipping mask, clipping mask. Anything you edit, anything, make sure you clip mask it. So I'm going to clipping mask this, uh, this really quick. And what I do is I'm going to show you guys what I mean by you can actually just use shapes. So if I just went over here, orange, boom, uh, transform selection. And if I wanted to do like stripes and not just use a texture, I can do that like that or whatever. And I go back over here and I'll have a orange stripe somewhere with my gray. Of course, the placement is, is very well easily to actually fix. You can see where it is and you can move it to the left or the right if you guys need to, uh, if you guys need to a little bit, maybe like right there. And it'll be more over here on the gun. So you, that's cool. So you guys can see in real time. So whatever mistakes you can, you know, you think you have, you can check. So it's very, very freaking cool about this. And with that being said, that's it. What I'm going to do, though, is use a texture. That's how I did with this one right here. And if you guys want to use textures too, you guys can. The way you do it is you simply up just get your texture, drag the texture into the UV map sheet, and then just simply enough use um, clipping mask as well and just right over the layer click mask and there you go you have the the gun now having this little cool little fade looking on it so with that being said once you've done your UV mapping sheet completely um, all you have to do is file save so file save as and you would just save this UV uh, UV mapping sheet something different so I'm just gonna name it uh, op skin tutorial boom if I press save now that this UV mapping sheet is gonna be 
you know, don't save over your original. You don't want to do that because then you're going to have just little... It's going to look different when you actually open it up for the first time again if you want to do something over again. So make sure you guys save it as and don't overwrite. Um, with that being said, once you save it as, this is actually going to have... This is actually going to have... I'm going to actually show you guys how to actually put it into Steam Workshop. So with that being said, I'm just going to quickly just trying to like do something different i'm just going to cut some of these other pieces out and put this texture on it just so i have like a an op skin that's like at least showable i guess i don't know freaking a but i'll be right back talk to you guys later One so once second. you actually finish designing your op skin or your skin whatever skin you're doing your csgo skin you're completely done with it you're ready to actually finish off and of course this is just mine i just put a little white background on it with some circles and just puts the uh, texture actually on the the scope as well as the body on both left and right sides of the op skin and with that being said, I ran into a little problem. I'm going to tell you guys what it was. What I did was I resaved the original file, meaning when I clicked on the op, I double click on this thing, the original file, the original UV uh, mapping sheet file. I re um, saved it a different name. So, of course, when that happened, I was no longer able to get real time updates in the original uh, op PSD. All I did to fix that, which is basically open up the original file again, which is double clicking on the op skin right here, uh, opening up the newly saved file, which has all the updates and such. Uh, excuse me, has all the new designs on it. All you have to do is just basically copy and paste uh, or just move everything over from your newly saved file to the original file and actually get real-time updates again because when you actually change the file name of the UVM mapping sheet, no longer will this be actually real-time updated. With that being said, that's how you fix the issue. But once you're done with the updating, uh, once you're done with the uh, sheet yourself, you're ready to go. All you have to do is go to File, Save As, and we're going to go to Desktop, and we're just going to name it uh, Purple Op, right? Purple Op, TGA. Uh, that's what you got to put it on. Target file right here. Change it to a TGA file. Purple Op. Once you've done that, press Save. And then once you press Save, I already have one. Press Replace. 32-bit uh, pixels. Press OK. And then once you got to do is you go to my folder where I told you guys you got to download, of course. So this is where the VTF edits file is. You can just open it up here. I'm actually going to put where you actually can download the original file itself homepage. I will put that on the description below as well. But excuse me, it's already in the folder itself. If you want to open it now, uh, we press run and we can just move that over a little bit. Well, this will actually do right how it opens. You can actually import the file that we just uh, saved from Photoshop. So the purple op skin right here, purple op TGA file, open. Uh, all these files, I mean, excuse me, all these properties and options are perfectly fine uh, on default, so press OK. And then once you've done this, it's gonna put the UV mapping sheet that you did in Photoshop into the VTF edits. We'll now turn the, uh, the, the target file, the TGA file, into a VTF file. So we're gonna go to file now. Uh, once you're done all loading in, uh, go to file, save as. We're going to change it to the VTF file. That's what we want. And we're just going to call it um, Ops Skin 2. Sure. Press save. And then once you press save, you're actually good to go. Good to, uh, you know, uh, just move on now. So this is actually where we're going to actually implement this new uh, VTA file into CSGO. So, of course, after this step, you're going to actually need the video game CSGO on Steam. I believe it's like a $15 purchase. Of course, it's a very good game as well. I play it. I enjoy it. But if you don't have this, um, if you have a friend that maybe has it, they can do this step for you as well. They can just give the files over to you or you can just give the files over to them and then you're good to go. But anyway, let's go to CSGO. Uh, make sure really quickly you have your options, your uh, keyboard and mouse options here. My phone just vibrated. That was weird. Uh, go to your keyboard options here. And if you just went to console, uh, toggle console, make sure you have a keybind for this. This is what you need to actually open your game console. So I'm going to go to mine. And all I have to do is type in work. And then automatically you should see workbench publish, start map, and then workbench, uh, workshop workbench. That's what you need to click on. Uh, just press submit. Once you've done this, it should open up. And if we can just make this a little bit bigger now, just like so. By the way, don't mind my AK. It's I know it's 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 I know it's beautiful, but it, it sucks still. Anyway, once you've done this part, you want to actually change where it says AK-47 to whatever gun you have. I have an op. I'm going to go where it says none. I'm going to go where it says customize paint job. I'm going to press choose pattern, and this is where we find our folder here or our, our uh, VTF file here. So users, Sesso. I put it on my desktop because I'm freaking cool like that. And I named it Opskin2. Press open. And this is where you can actually see an inspect and actually do some uh, screenshots that are right here in game and such. So it looks really all cool and such. You can see all these cool angles and then edit into Photoshop if you wish to. But of course, this looks really weird right now because the offsets are all different. You want to change it to the default offsets, which would be which would be all the way moving all your rotations and your offsets all the way to the left. So that actually it lines up perfectly, like so. 
and of course you actually have to click on ignore weapon size scale once you've done that now it should be completely perfect and everything should be how uh, everything should look like how you had it in Photoshop originally so of course your wear has to be not on battle scar because this looks disgusting as hell just put it on factory new um, some people I know as well have the same issue as me but some people don't have the same issue I'm not sure what the issue uh, what causes it but even if you have it on factory new it almost looks minimal wear um, it looks very weird. This is what minimal wear looks like, and this is what factory new looks like. I don't know why it doesn't fix itself, but for some time, some people just put it on battle scar and just put it back on factory new, and it works. I'm not sure why mine doesn't, but this is where you can actually take a screenshot now. So I just inspect, and if I want to take a screenshot just like that, I'm I just pressed uh, light shop um, print screen. That's what I just did right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I'm pressing save. I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. I'm gonna call it one two three. Replace that. And then when I have this, this is where you can actually start saving this as right here. Save this as. We're going to go back to C drive, da, 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 users, CESO, and we go back to desktop. I like to save, I think, on my desktop. It's easier to find when it comes to this stuff right here. And we're just going to name it um, tutorial op uh, save. And then once you save it, the submit button will actually be clickable now. You can press submit. And this is where you would publish it to your workshop and actually, you know, all, all that cool stuff you can see it in the CSGO workshop and such. So this is where you title it. I'm going to call it Tutorial Op. And then you can browse the uh, newly found image that you print screened. You can also use this as your thumbnail for, of course, you want to use this as your thumbnail for the workshop, you know, thumbnail looking things or whatever. Um, basically, I'm just going to use the, the print screen I had. I would probably edit it in Photoshop and such, make it look cool, have the name on the bottom like I had on my uh, the Doppler Op that I did. And just make it look cool. And once you do that, press open. I don't know, just something like that. Uh, your t your target file right here, browse it, or your TGA file here. You just want to do the same thing as what you put in from the VTF edits. So we're going to go back to here. And then that's when I use the purple op TGA open. And then once you've done that, you press I have read. And then you press publish. And you're good to go. You're all done. And you just created your own op skin that people can actually view and see. And of course, for the description, I'm going to put uh, make sure you leave a like that's a thing so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video today uh hopefully you guys have a cool little weekend project and just some fun projects to do um this is a pretty cool upload for me so please leave a like if you guys enjoyed comment any new tutorials you want to see me do uh, also subscribe don't forget to subscribe guys i'm almost at 40k we're close we're like 4k away i'll give it like three months maybe i really hope so that'd be freaking awesome thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so for the support uh make sure to check out my selfie selfie.com so hq for any pre-mades and packs as low as five dollars and don't forget to follow my twitter at SOHQ, of course, where you can tweet me any you know project ideas. If you have any project ideas, want to show me guys uh, some of the stuff, some of the stuff you have, or you have any questions, of course, please just tweet me, uh, tweet me, please, or leave in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. Switch you out later.